All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I know for our virtual friends, you've been here all morning long already, so we thank you for sticking with it. And for our in-person uh, group, we're just going to have a quick presentation on Google Level 1 certification. And so that we could get everybody at once, we're just going to do it virtually. So I've seen some of you in person, and now I'm seeing you online. All right. So before we begin, I did just put it in chat, but I want to remind everybody, please do make sure you take time to sign in this afternoon. In order to be eligible for payment, you do have to have signed in for the morning and afternoon. All right. So the link is in chat. You see it here. There's also some QR codes in the room. And for virtual, we'll continue to place it in chat for a few moments, um, but that form will close in about 15 minutes. So take some time now to fill that in. It's the same form as this morning. You just need to complete it a second time for the afternoon. Okay. Great. So before we really dive into what Google Educator Level 1 certification is, I wanted to launch a quick poll just to see how familiar you are with it. So I know in person, you guys can't necessarily respond, but at least for those who are joining virtually, if you could just let me know um, if you have no idea, what is it? Maybe you've heard of it. Maybe you've even started working on it, or some of you may have had it um, and it expired or you currently have it. So just kind of let me know where you are. All right, I see. Quite a few of us have heard of it. We've probably seen somebody's badge in their signature, or maybe you've just heard of other people talking about it. Great. All right. All right, so good. That gives me kind of an idea of where we are. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll here. It's okay if you didn't get to fill it out. And we'll have another one at the end to see what your thoughts are then. Um, but I'm just going to give you a little bit of an idea of what it is, maybe why you would want it, and how you can work toward it and what resources we have to support you in that process. By no means is it something that's expected or required. It's just something some people like to work towards. So what is Google Level 1 certification? Well, it is a certification offered by Google. And the target audience for this is, of course, educators. They have a level one and a level two. Typically, people work toward level one first, which is a focus on products. And then they work toward level two, which is a focus more on your professional practice. So um, why? One, the recognition, right? You get that badge. You get to throw it in your signature and show everybody that you work toward that. Uh, it, it's an opportunity for you to show that you have some proficiency with the Google tools. It's also a chance for you to develop that proficiency with some of the core tools. And we'll take a peek here in just a moment about um, which tools are generally included. And then, of course, the more you know, the more opportunities you can build into your instruction to let students use those tools. And we can go from just using uh, some of the tools for ourselves to really putting them in the hands of the students and see where they can take them. And so this morning, um, you already learned how you can use Google Docs, hopefully in ways with your students and have your students use them. And then here in just a few minutes, you'll learn about how you can use Google Slides to do similar things. Um, and then going through the certification really opens up to a lot of different areas of the Google Workspace products. All right, so what is the exam like? Some of us hear exam and we get those nerves going back from our, our college days or maybe even high school and some of us are like, exam, give it to me. But what is it? Really, it's not that bad. They've changed it a lot. So if you are someone who has taken or who was working towards certification, maybe let's say pre-pandemic is a nice um, cutoff point. It looked very different. They have since updated it and uh, made it not easier, but the presentation and the format is a little different. So what does it include? Well, first it's 35 selected response questions. It used to be a significantly high number, higher number of questions with some demonstration. 
Now it's all selected response, but that doesn't mean that it's easy. It doesn't mean that it's hard, but it doesn't mean that you can sort of like guess your way through. Um, it is open book, open note. So obviously Google is a search engine, right? They know we search for everything. So they don't expect you to know how to do every single thing. Of course, you should be comfortable doing most of it, but if you need to check your notes to remember how to do a certain formula or what a certain thing means, you can, um, but you still wanna be prepared. And you have 180 minutes total to take the exam. Now, with only 35 questions, most people are finishing under the 180 minute mark, but you do have a full three hours to take it. So you really can take your time, work through it and um, come up with your best responses. There is a fee, it's $10. Um, at the end of this, I'll show you how you do have an opportunity to get a voucher to cover that fee. And if you pass the exam, your certification is valid for three years. So when you go to take it again, we know how much Google changes. So you would still want to refresh yourself and go through some of the resources a second time. So what does the exam cover? Well, it covers a lot of our main products, um, mail, calendar, drive, docs, um, meet. So we might not be using meet as much anymore. So that's something that we would maybe want to brush up on. Um, then our core tools like dot, our sheets, slides, forms, Google sites, Google drawings, Jamboard, YouTube. Um, and when we think about YouTube, not so much just how do I look for a video? I think we're all pretty good at that, but more how you, can you use it instructionally? How can you curate playlists or how can you create a playlist? And um, what are some of the things you can add to videos and content that you're uploading? Uh, there's a little bit about Chrome. And I know hopefully in our later sessions today, you'll hear some tips about Chrome, but there are some important things to know about the browser and how you can leverage the features of that. And then finally, classroom. So some of us who have kind of already completely gone onto the Canvas bandwagon, um, would maybe have to dive back into some of the resources to see what's new in Classroom. So, um, you know, you just go through the materials and, and see um, where you feel comfortable and what you would need to practice. I'm just gonna take a quick peek at chat. And okay, I think we're doing all right. All right, so what does it look like? Here's a sample of what a question might look like. And I realize it might look a little small, um, this is a sample from another trainer who shared it. So it may not be an exact one, but you can see it's a multiple choice question, but there will be, it would not be uncommon to have multiple correct answers. But the nice thing is Google will tell you how many answers they expect you to select. So you can see here, and I'll read it in case it's a little small, especially for our in-person room. Teachers can you use Google Classroom to manage and organize their digital resources. Which of the following can Classroom help accomplish? And then we're really looking to see which three, and they even helped us out by putting three check marks. So I would have to drag a check mark to each of the answers that I feel are correct for that response. So a lot of questions might be similar to this, or there might be some matching where you're matching a definition of a feature or a product to its purpose, um, things like that. Okay. Now, here are some things that we need to know just about what's required to take the exam. Um, you can do it on just about any device, Chrome. So if you have only have a Chromebook, you can do it on Mac, you can do it on Windows, but you have to make sure that those computers have a webcam and that's because Google's monitoring throughout the exam to make sure that um, it's you, it's you taking the exam. So they may occasionally, because it is open notebook, but it's not you know, a partner activity. It's not phone a friend. So they do make sure that you are the one taking the exam the entire time. Um, it is based in Chrome. So you would wanna make sure that you're using the Chrome browser and it's an updated version, which we know if we're restarting our computers often, that our Chrome is updating and we should be fine. 
And then the last one is, of course, you just have to be connected to the internet for the form, to, I mean, for the exam to work. So some basic things. I think one other thing that I would add that I did not include here is quiet space. When you're ready to take the exam and you have the computer and you have all of those things, you'll also want to make sure you've clearly set aside time and you found a location where you can focus. So how do you get ready? So we know what the exam is. It's 30 some questions, a lot of selected, all selected response covering a variety of tools. So how on earth do we get ready? There's two ways that we have for you. The first one is Google's teacher center, right? It's their product and it's meant to prepare you for their exam. So there are two levels of training, but if you're focused on level one, you're going to focus on the fundamentals training. The other one prepares you for level two, um, but fundamentals prepares you for level one. And with each level, or there's 13 units, and within each unit, you'll see that there are practice quizzes. So even if you get to a topic, like let's say it's um, Google Mail, and you say like, I think I'm really good at mail. We always encourage everyone to take the quiz, and that might help you spot areas um, where you need to improve. So I, I kind of think, do it like the like an Oreo. Start from the front, read the objectives, kind of give yourself a mental check, and then go to the back and do the quiz. And if you struggle on the quiz, then go for the cream in the middle, go through all the content. Um, or some of us just start at the beginning and go all the way through. You kind of know where your comfort level is and where your skills are and what works for you. Um, none of it is required. It's all just optional. But I do recommend that you log in, as you see here in the top right corner, so you can save your progress and you'll come back and you'll see, okay, I worked on this unit, now I'm gonna go to this unit. I'm gonna actually jump in to the um, fundamental center. And you can see here, and you can see I am signed in. And if we scroll down, you'll see that I have each of my units and I can click again on the introduction so I understand what this is going to cover. What, I, what will I learn? All of this. And then I can either just go all the way through or I can go back to my outline. Say, you know what? I think I got this. So I'm gonna go to the review and then go through the quizzes. Now you'll get feedback right away as soon as you take the quiz, it'll tell you what you got right, what you got wrong. And then you can really use that to go through the content either for the first time or again, to help make sure you have a good understanding. Um, now I will say Google's not tricky. They're not out to get you, but they also wanna make sure that you have a firm understanding. So it will, um, there are some finer details in some of the questions. So that's the teacher center. You can use that as a resource. The second option we have is something that is just for our district and other districts who have paid, but it's a, a service called Mobile Mind. It's a Chrome extension. And we have a limited number of licenses for this. And I'll tell you how you can get one. But this lets you choose, again, some tutorials that you want to have. Some of the activities here are, um, instead of just tutorials, there's videos, there's performance-based challenges. So it might take you into sites and say, create a page, change the banner, do such and so. And then there's actually somebody who scores that and gives you feedback. Um, so it's a little bit more back and forth if you feel you need um, some actual engagement in your practice or your preparation. And, the, if you get an, a license for Mobile Mind from us, it also includes an exam voucher, which would cover the $10 fee. So after someday uh, next week, probably around Wednesday, we'll send a Google form to everybody who attended today for the Google sessions. That's why it's really important that you sign in for both the morning and the afternoon. And we'll invite you to fill out the form if you want a Mobile Mind voucher, um, a Mobile Mind license. If you think the exam's not for me, I'm not doing it, you don't need to fill it out, it's completely okay. It's just an extra resource for you. 
Okay. So I know we're right at 115. I don't want to take too much time from our um, afternoon presenters. But if you have questions, if you're virtual, drop them in chat. Ashana, if there's anybody in the room has a question, if um, Ashana is very well versed in this as well, so either she can answer it or if, she, if you want to just unmute and I can answer it as well. And I will say that the links to this presentation and the resources that I shared are all on that note-taking document that we sent to each of you in the email before to, um, leading up to today. Then I think I resent it this morning. So you can always access that and get the links that we shared. There is no CPD credit because this is completely on your own. It's not district sponsored, it's just for you. Good question. All right. Well, then I thank you all for your time and I'm going to turn it over to our afternoon presenters so that they can take you through the next um, segment. <laughs>